I am here today in the very big gorge and as you can see behind me the gorge has all dried up and because the glaciers might have frozen it's cold out here now although it's officially it's autumn but it's cold very cold actually so let's talk about a path from buddha to siddha <laughs> i wrote about it and a lot of questions came through like usually what happens is that people start walking their spiritual journey and they get lot of siddhis lot of powers and finally they reach their ultimate goal they are self realized but for me it wasn't like that because i was not actively or consciously you can say pursuing any kind of uh, siddhis i was uh, i wanted to know the truth and that was very important for me and i realized that i am not whole so i need to be just trying to integrate my entire existence i have to make myself uh, whole as much as possible i have to remove all the chitta vrittis vasanas and vikars that i have so my constant effort was towards that and i was doing contemplation i was uh, all the time either i was meditating doing kriya yoga or i was following the path of tantra in which you do realize different shaktis within you and you start use them just to remove your chitta vrittis and you are not doing anything else not playing around fooling around with them so then when i was enlightened <clears throat> there was a gap between gap of around like 8 months or you can say 8 9 months before my self realization started so after enlightenment i stayed in samadhi for like 72 to 75 days and uh, then when i came out of it it was sort of it expanded my existence I do not have words to <laughs> explain what it did to me, but yeah. So I did came out of it, and uh, the reason for that was that I had to resolve the remaining karma, karmic seed. I have to parch the remaining karmic seeds that I have, and one was very important karmic seed uh, that could have led me to take another human birth, and uh, it was I had to travel to. Sedona Arizona to actually uh, get rid of it to resolve it and to finally get out of it so in order to find out things and find out about me and who I was in past life what happened why it happened and then I had to let go of the fact that what what is more important do I really want to be go into self realization or do I still want to take that another birth and live another life so i just couldn't do anything else i mean i i had no option no choice but to just be just go for full annihilation you can say the no self experience and just be no more i didn't wanted to take any another birth or do take any revenge or live another life for because of the fact that i was a native american boy in my past life one of my past life and i was killed so in sedona in arizona in america so i just let it go and i found enough proof of by going there i found enough proofs of who i was and i was recognized by the native american people there yavapai tribe tribe people there it's recognized by them so then i came back and then i said okay yes i'm done i didn't know what will happen now what self realization it after all it happens to you first time and then i fell into nothingness and uh, you know just went through my own death first time first time where your actually your atma merges with parmatma you can say your 
cosmic consciousness, the existence that you are as a cosmic consciousness, finally becomes absolute. It just goes beyond the quality of, beyond the consciousness itself. You go beyond it. So then you become absolute and you are rooted in it and the world is lost, your uh, body consciousness is lost and it's not that easy <laughs> to live afterwards in the body. It's not easy. You have to figure out every day. You have to find out enough solid reason to live. But yeah, it's going on. I am here in this body teaching you guys, helping you guys, helping other people. So after enlightenment, while I was looking for my previous birth and previous karmic seeds, while I was looking for all that, I started accidentally discovering all my siddhis, all the supernatural powers, you can say. I started accidentally discovering all of that. And one by one, one by one, I kept on discovering them. And then initially, it was good, but I never felt like playing with it sort of just because I had those siddhis I never tried to use it because I was still not done after enlightenment I knew that there is something remaining otherwise I wouldn't have come out of that rooting that samadhi that had happened the self-absorption that had happened I wouldn't have come out of it I, if I had come out of it then that means there is still something pending in my existence which is stopping me to be permanently rooted or permanently be beyond and never come back i knew that fact so i i was not very you know interest very much interested into playing all these things and doing something with my siddhis and many people in that time started reaching out to me mysteriously and a lot of mystical things happened. They started reaching out to me for help. They started reaching out to me for the fact that they wanted to, you know, ask me to teach them. They wanted me to help them. They wanted me to start lecturing and be teaching. And But I just denied. I said, I'm not done yet. Okay. The day I'm done, then we will see what happens. And if I need to teach or if I need to do, still do, uh, sadhana or whatever it is I will see afterwards but before until I am 100% done just do not involve me into the world of because I if you start teaching or if you start getting involving with the world um, just when you had enlightenment then what happens is that your self-realization is delayed your permanent rooting into the absolute is delayed why because now you, this I am, I am here, this I here stays alive and it hangs on to whatever your experience or whatever your Samadhi experience, whatever your cosmic consciousness experience that you had until then. So you get a reason to still, your, your hum, your ego, your identity, it still gets a reason to hang on to something, gets a reason to still be alive in you. And that is what is against, that is what stops you from being permanently absorbed into absolute and so it's not advisable to you know just become a guru out of your enlightenment or until you are incomplete until you are not done hundred percent especially do not become a spiritual guru you can become chemistry professor you can become biology teacher, you can become computer instructor, you can become whatever. Just do not do get into the spiritual domain and teaching because one thing, it is still a half-cooked knowledge, half-cooked gyan, half-cooked wisdom that you have. So your view is still not coming from the absolute, from the permanent uh, permanence. It is still coming from the impermanence of the world. And another thing is that your siddhis, your powers do not get mature enough to be able to handle the cosmos or in other words you still stand a chance to interfere in your own work the work that divine has to uh, do through you 
the cosmos has to do through you the deliverance that has to happen through you you still stand a chance to you know interfere in that and you because your eye is alive your sense of uh, identity is still alive and that has to completely go away and it goes away only and only and only when you are self realized when then you are rooted in permanent permanence you are rooted in absolute and uh, you do not stand a chance of interfering into what happens through you what does not get does not happen through you to whom it get to whom it happens to whom you deliver to whom you not deliver to whom you give shakti to whom you not give shakti to whom you are able to uh, protect or do certain things or teach through your uh, siddhis and powers and to whom you are not in other words you just do not stand in between your own way through what has to be delivered in the divine form so i didn't do much back then and uh, after self realization the body consciousness was gone it actually took me about 2 years 2 and 1/2 years to be able to have a better control on this body better better grasp of this physical existence so it's like you suddenly become a baby again and you now have to learn to walk in the world sustain yourself in the world live in the world so it's a very difficult journey and it cannot be walked alone after the journey after the self realization you always have to have people around you to support you to help you to understand that if you're not feeling hungry but you are you have to be fed you have to be given food you may be not you may not be feeling thirsty but you still have to um, drink water because your body body will need it right you still have to you there's no way you now you can sleep but you have to go to bed so that body can rest and uh, regenerate itself although the aging becomes very slow and all these things happen still bodies body physical existence has to de- will deteriorate over the period of time so if you are alive after self realization if you are still having a body then it takes some time to balance yourself so while i was doing all that that was the time after self realization when all the shaktis and siddhis and cosmic realities they started teaching me directly so i do not have to do anything much or anything special initially and slowly i started learning mantra after mantra i did not learn the mantras through books or anything i would just wake up and a mantra would be echoing in me echoing in me and the first mantra that i heard was uh, was reem reem and the way reem was being chanted the frequency of it and the you know the sound of it that is way much different than i have found anybody chanting that way now i do teach my students and when i give them initiation mantra initiations or different kinds of tantra initiations when i give i do give those mantras in the real way that i have found them the real frequency that i have found within me the way they echo in me so that is why i tell people that in order to know the real way how a mantra is chanted it has to echo in you because nowhere in, in these days in any even in the scriptures that you find the real sound pattern is missing so now we again have to rely on our own power of shruti the power of letting it echo in the nad that you are the echo of om omkar that you are you have to just let that mantra any mantra echo in that and see how it's how the sound pattern is what the frequency is what the rhythm is and that is how i learned about various mantras different mantras i 
when I heard a mantra echoing in me, then I had to also had to learn. So it used to take me like two, three days to learn about what is the effect of this mantra, what it does actually, and which shakti it is about, what shakti it is about. And you know, when the, your view is coming from the permanence, when your view is coming from the, you know, absolute then it's very hard for you to try and divide again all the shaktis because you have realized the ultimate nature of shakti you have reached that point and now you again have to divide and see it's like suppose you made you may suppose there was a milk suppose there is a milk and there is water there is sugar and there is then you heat it and there are tea leaves and you made a tea for yourself okay so now my view is coming from the full point of view where you just see the tea but when it comes to tantra for me the path was from being buddha i first attained the uh, self realization and then there on i went to become a siddha a really accomplished then you know well settled siddha and i'm for few things i'm still on my way i haven't had a chance to explore them much but now from that standpoint you have to see you are seeing a tea i'm looking at a tea but now i have to see it in different things like when i look at tea i have to look at milk separately i have to uh, you know imbibe the presence of water in it imbibe the presence of heat in it imbibe the presence of uh, uh, look at the presence of uh, sugar in it and tea leaves in it so now when you become one then or you say you become absolute not even divisible into one or zero or two or four whatever that is so from the absolute now you have to divide it again back into the cosmic reality when it comes to becoming a siddha so that is how my journey started of becoming a siddha realizing mantras understanding different shaktis and when different people come to me now i am able to understand which shakti is going to do what for them and what initiation is needed who should be given what kind of initiation and who should not be given some initiations what are different rajasic shaktis shaktis with rajas what are the shaktis with tamas what are the shaktis uh, with sattva and my first journey was with all the shaktis with sattva it was very easy for me from the absolute point of view it was very easy for me to just realize that much and i stopped after a while i thought yeah it's done <laughs> but then i realized no there are rajasik shaktis as well and raj rajasik shaktis started teaching to me and then slowly i started realizing that you know tamasik shaktis have their own purpose in life so you cannot say you only need the sense of uh, your eyes the sense of seeing you also need sense of touch you also need sense of uh, hearing and overall all these things make your life really beautiful all your senses all your exactly in the same way different shaktis make this existence complete you know different things in cosmic reality in cosmic consciousness and uh, this make life very beautiful and very interesting it's being a mystic is a <laughs> wonderful journey in itself very wonderful journey in itself and uh, being a mystic is also about being in love with the entire cosmos and once you start seeing it from that standpoint from the absolute when you look down and you look at cosmic reality cosmic shaktis the entire all the you know you 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 are one with yog maya and you see that yog maya is within you or you see you are in yog maya and this maya then it's very beautiful very beautiful experience only when we are looking at at it from the very separated point of view when we are walking our own spiritual journey then it seems like no 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 it's all just painful and life is suffering and you know i want to know the truth but when you are done with all that then suddenly the same cosmos the same life the same nature around you the same thing just turns into utterly utterly beautiful awesome world of awesome existence 
I still feel lack of words when I try to <laughs> explain things from my point of view. Or maybe I do not have a point of view. <laughs> I am not there to even create a point of view. It's okay. As I still try to, so that you can, you know, I can inspire people and uh, can help them walk their own journey. I try to put things into words as much as possible. So I hope you understand this, that for some, the path is from Buddha to Siddha. For some, the path is from Siddha to Buddha. So it's the same thing for, it was the same thing for Buddha as well. He attained, he became Buddha and then he had all the powers, all the Shaktis and he was a very strong, very strong, very powerful Siddha as well. And a lot of Gyanis, a lot of self-realized people actually were mystic of the very high order. They were Mahayogis, not just Yogi, Mahayogis because of the fact that, you know, the cosmic consciousness taught them by itself. Shaktis, when Shaktis teach you by itself, by themselves, it's a completely different experience than learning it by reading or by watching something or even from a guru. When you have a direct experience that cannot be equated with any other form of learning. So I hope you understand that many of you will actually go onto the path of Siddha and finally someday you will become a Buddha. But for me, the path was from Buddha to Siddha. Or you can say I realized my powers and Shaktis and all those things after I was self-realized. And now they get used in whichever way it needs to be. It is the way it is. It is the way it can be, it should be. <laughs> So try, whether you go onto the path from Siddha to Buddha or you get into the realization, self-realization first and then you walk your journey towards a Siddha. I would say one thing that it's all for divine play. It is all because you have to be useful for, in, till the time you are existing you should be least intrusive and non-intrusive and be useful for this nature, for this Maya and make it at least a happier place, non-suffering place for those who are still living inside it, those who are still walking this journey, those who are still walking their spiritual journey. So may you become a Siddha, may you become a Buddha and you go on walking your journey. Namaste. Jai Shivai.